Hey there, YouTube land, and today is a big day. You can see behind me what it is. It is the annual Scream Factory Summer Fear Sale, and this tends to be my favorite sale. Last year, I got a lot of titles during this one here, and uh, really beefed up my collection. So, obviously, this year there wasn't so much so far for me to pick out. I have over 70 Scream Factory titles in my collection, so uh, I'm lucky enough to get. If I'm lucky enough to get eight or ten out of this out of this sale, it'll be it'll be cool. <clears throat> but I'm thinking that a lot of the ones that they're going to show because I know in the uh, basically the static list, the uh, the old favorites, they've got like uh, a page, and they usually keep that page, and they don't change it much unless they sell out of something. Until uh, and and then they'll put something else in its place. But usually that's pretty much stays that page will stay what it is for the uh, for most of the sale, if not all of it. And uh, every, every week there's going to be six rotating titles. So what I did. So I grabbed stuff in my collection that I had there, and I thought we'd talk about each of the titles and let you know what I thought of them and which ones I think they are definitely pickups. For me, all this stuff is pickups, but uh, it all depends on what you like, and that's what we're going to get into. Mm. Now, I picked up two things uh, this time around for this week, just to let you guys know, and uh, I'm getting Supernova coming with uh, James Spader, Angela Bassett, Lou Diamond Phillips. Uh, it's very cheesy, very kind of science fiction-y. Uh, it's not for everybody. Uh, it's got the longer already cut of it, which is really cool. It's got a 25 minute making of, of with uh, with you know with James Spader's there. And Angel Bassett doesn't show up, of course, because well, some people felt pretty burnt by the film, <clears throat> but uh, I thought it was cheesy fun. And I also grabbed in the old favorite section. I grabbed finally grabbed Eva Destruction. It's a movie that I've seen on VHS, and I haven't seen it since then. Uh, it stars Gregory Hines and uh, God, I can't remember the other actress's name. But she's like a foreign actress, uh, very cute, and she has this kind of catchphrase. <clears throat> that's a uh, do you want to say the catchphrase, Ann? No. Why don't you want to say the catchphrase? Because it's stupid. Aren't you sensitive? <clears throat> too sensitive. She's too sensitive, so the catchphrase. <clears throat> anyway, check it out. In the, check out the trailer. It's really cheesy fun. So those are two that I grabbed. The only other one that I don't have out of all the stuff this year is the TV tears. I left that one for another time because, say, there's one time that when there's only one title, uh, TV tears gave me that second title to give me that free shipping. Uh, two movies get you, get you free shipping. And if you don't know as well, we also have these amazing coasters. Last year there was magnets. And uh, if you... Ah! If you never got last year's... I'm not sure we can see the coasters while they're not, but if you never got last year's uh, prize, I'll show you what it looks like. I'll be right back. If you're lucky enough to get on the sale, get in on the sale last year, you got these awesome Scream Factory magnets. This I've got one on my on my refrigerator. I got, gave one to the kids, and this here's my unopened uh, copy of uh, last year's magnets. So, pretty cool stuff. So yeah, I ordered at least four times, and the fourth time there was no magnets. So if you're gonna order, try to order within the first couple weeks because these things, these limited edition things, coasters, magnets, they tend to sell out. And they go really fast, and then people get like peeved because you know it's in the fourth week. How come we're not getting the, the magnets or the coasters? Well, it's because the, there's only so many of them, and that's that's it. Once they're done, they're done. They're cool collectibles. It's like going to a convention and getting up to that table early enough to uh, get those, you know, the cool free or kind of the cool limited edition stuff that you see at those San Diego Comic Con stuff like that. Anyway, here we go. <clears throat> Let's start. We're almost three minutes in, and we haven't even looked at one. One thing, so let's start off with one of my favorite movies of all time, and one of my favorite Scream Factories. I've told you guys this so many times, but uh, for people that are just finding my channel for the first time, please like, subscribe, and share. <clears throat> and uh, Dolls. Dolls is a really cool movie done by Charles Band. This is back in the Empire Pictures days. And uh, this is before Puppet Master, and uh, it's so good. I mean, uh, we got a Stuart Gordon directing this, who was basically, he did Reanimator, he did this, he did From Beyond, he hit such a great... Uh, hat trick of like uh, films. Dolls is, is very much a uh, kind of a dark fairy tale. <clears throat> it's got, although there's some mean spirit in people in the film and that get their just desserts, the movie itself is very much not mean spirit. It's very much a Grimm's fairy tale. It's very neat that the way it's done, special effects are, may seem a little bit cheesy but they still hold up. The practical effects actually work. The uh, teddy bear scene is one of my favorite scenes of all time and finding out the origin of the new punch is a really really cool. It's a great little film. Um, one little uh, piece of trivia on here is that the girl, one of the main girls, kind of like the uh, 
the two more sluttier girls in the in the film. One of them is actually the girl that's from the video Take On Me by Aha. So, you know, the love interest in that. Watch this movie again, and you'll uh, see her down there. Actually, the alternate cover, that doll there, in a way, is kind of based on a scene from, uh, from her in the film. So, uh, definitely check it out, Dolls. It's a great one. Now, they do not s promise that you will get slips with these here. With the collector's editions. They hope to get slips with most of them. A lot of the later ones will have slips, but I'm guessing that some of the earlier stuff may not all have slip covers. So that may be a trade off, but uh, for the prices that these things are going at, I don't think it's a bad trade off at all. Uh, Dolls has some great features on here. Two audio commentaries. There's a great making of here. I think it runs for 45 minutes long. Really great stuff. The actual trailer and just a lot of really cool stuff. And it's a great, a great. Uh, transfer the film. So this is one that you, if you don't have it, I put it at the top of your list of ones that you gotta get. <clears throat> in the land, back in the line of like stuff you really gotta get that I think you gotta get, that speak for me anyway, was the uh, double feature Tales from the Crypt and Vault of Horror. This is a really good one. Uh, it's got both movies uncut for the first time on Blu-ray right here. But it doesn't stop there. It could stop right there and say okay that's it, you got two uncut movies Double feature, because some double features don't have any features at all. And this one doesn't have any features, like there's no commentaries, there's no making of it. Well, what is there? There is There are two other versions of Vault of Horror on it. There's a, there's a the theatrical cut of Vault of Horror, and then it's done with a uh, 1 8 5 ratio. But there's an also open mat, uncut version of Vault of Horror as well. And these have some sexy, sexy cases. Look at those Blu rays. Those are really sexy looking Blu rays. We have so many. There, see, huh? When you have so many that are out there, and you open them up, and you see like black or gray, and just the, the title on it. When you see the, them put the effort in and do this, and not just to, to do it, but I give them two complete, two different covers. Now, of course, the Vault of Horror one is a, you know, an, an upscale version of uh, of the picture from here. But that kind of makes sense since you're getting an open matte version of the film to give you a bigger open matte version of the uh, of the picture on the other side. So it's really cool that way. Vault of Horror, or are two. Uh, and Tales from Crypt are two great Amicus films. They're anthology films. You love anthology. you got to have this one. And you, you should have it. It's just a great film. <clears throat> Next up is one that's not for everybody, but it was for me. I really did like this film. I watched it when I was a kid. I thought it was underrated. Um, and that is Invaders from Mars by Toe Hooper. And uh, I had a lot of fun with this. It's a remake of an old uh, 50s film. You actually get to see the, uh, the, the alien, the Martian leader, in the, uh, I think it's in the store. Uh, that's one I like the uh, curio curios. There's a great making of on here. Again, we've got another audio commentary, some great featurettes. So, uh, very f cool edition. I'm really not surprised that this one wasn't actually a collector's edition because it really did have enough on there to be one. Next up is one that I, I really enjoyed. And uh, I had uh, actually I reviewed this one with my friend Kelly on here uh, not that long ago. And it's Phantom of the Opera with, uh, by Robert England really fun film uh it's like family opera but it's meets slasher and it just does a great job that so there's some like original opera in there in there as well which uh it, it's so mixed in, in the way that it is you've got this gory slasher type thing with some great set pieces and then you have some like some modern aspects to it that are put in there and then you, you it brings you back and you have like some original like score with some great opera work and like some classic opera and some original opera work in here so some people thought that it didn't find its way, but I thought it was just a perfect mix for me, and I really did enjoy this movie. Jill Sholin, who's one of my big crushes, is in this film here, and uh, oh man, I love to meet her at a convention. She is utterly amazing, the stuff she does. Family Opera. It's a pick for me. If you're into the Family Opera and you like slasher type films, like gore type films, and a little bit of the gothic put in there as well, then you'll probably like this one. If you're a fan of Hammer films, then you'll probably like this, because this is very much done in the line of Hammer. That's what they were going for. Unfortunately, this was a time when a lot of people didn't really know Hammer and films were going in a different direction. A lot of people went to see this family opera, thought they were going to get like the uh, Michael Crawford style family opera because that was becoming popular at the time. Of course, that was that was not that at all. This is more of the Herbert Lamy style Hammer, Herbert Lamy, Herbert Lamy style Hammer family opera that was done uh, back in the day. It wanted to do that, and uh, Robert England did this. With the director, Dwight Little, they said, you know, we want to do our uh, tribute to Hammer, and that's what this is. So if you like Hammer, you'll like this. Next up is Sleepaway Camp. It is upside down, and a classic. <clears throat> I love this film. It is so fun. It's so cheesy. 
Uh, it's got some neat little features on it. We got new commentary on here with star of Fliss Rose and Jonathan Thurston. We have an original commentary there with the director of Fliss Rose and Jeff and webmaster Jeff Hayes, who would be pretty much as the guy that's kept Sleepaway Camp going with his website throughout the years and actually helped get like uh, more publicity to it. He actually made a short film that's on here called Judy. Good Lord, you have to see it to believe it. It's just one of those things. Uh, <clears throat> my cousin watched actually uh, this weekend, and he was like, "Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God!" And uh, what? It is. It's true. He did it completely out of love. He loves to. Jeff Hayes loves the Sleepaway Camp series, and it shows. If you ever check out his website, the Sleepaway Camp website, and it's really worth. If you're a fan of the films, so worth checking into it. Cause uh, here's a guy that put a lot of effort and a lot of work into the stuff he did. Jeff Hayes, uh, props to you, man, for doing all, all the stuff that you've done and keep a movie that I thought was gonna get lost, one that was considerably a favorite of mine. But uh, thanks to guys like him, no, it's not. Seaboy Camp, if you're a slasher fan, this belongs in your collection. You really gotta have this one. There's a great twist at the end of this one. If you haven't read about it by now, or somehow you don't know what the, tw well, the twist of Seaboy Camp is, you, uh, you're in for a treat. You really yeah. are. <clears throat> now, with the uh, old favorites, what they did this time, was they did them in alphabetical order. So I'm gonna try and do them in the same order that they came out. Prices? Yeah, I guess I could get the prices. <clears throat> so, what are the prices? She's like, she's pumping me off screen. She's like my producer. So, let's go. For dolls, it's going to cost you $17.99, which is actually a pretty decent price for that one. Fan the Opera is going to run you $14.99. Tells them to create a vault of horror. Double feature is going to run you $14.99. Sleepaway Camp will run you $17.99. Invaders from Mars will be $14.99. And Supernova, which is the one I'm getting right now, because it's the only one I don't have, is going to be $14.99. Now, remember, when you get two items... There's no tax, bam, shipping, handling is free. So, bam, it's cool, by the way. I ordered two Blu-rays, and uh, I think it came to like $26 altogether, $26.76, something like that. And that's actually pretty good. Uh, probably translate, trans put into American, that was probably around 33 36 uh, to Canadian, I mean, for American. But still, it's really good for, uh, <clears throat> for two really quality titles. <clears throat> well, let's get into the first one. And the first one will run you $42. It's the most expensive of the screen factories that are going to be on there. And if you haven't picked this one up yet, now's a really good time to get it. And it is the Amityville Trilogy. A lot of people passed this one by when it came out first. But I think this is a great, great set. Um, are all Amityville films equal? No, but they're all really fun. James Brolin and Margot Kerry do a great job in what is probably actually the lesser of the Amityville films when you really think about it. And they do. When you think about it, it's cheesy to get but still, it's a fantastic film, and uh, you have some great cover art for these here. There's a bunch of features on here. I guess the audio commentary, for God's sakes, get, her, get out a documentary with the stars, tactical trailer, radio spots, just some really cool stuff. And uh, some great interior as well. The, the beast of the set, though, is Anvil 2, The Possession. This is one that a lot of people have, uh, have a lot of like serious love for. And doesn't get talked about enough. But when people talk about the Amityville films and talk about what's the best one, people say, you know, when one is good, it's a classic. But number two is that hidden gem that most people, when they find, they're like, damn, this is definitely the best out of them all. And Amityville 2, The Possession of Andrew Prime is a really good film. It's an Italian-style film because it's done by an Italian director. It's got uh, interviews with director Damiano Demine. I hope I got his name right there. Uh, new new interviews with act with actors Andrew Prime, Diane Franklin, and Rutgiana Aldo. I do a commentary with the author, with author Alexander Holzer, etc. Trailer. So there's a lot of cool stuff for one that basically just some incredible, incredible stuff. There's some really weird stuff in here. This the reaction, the relationship between the brother and sister, just the abusiveness of a I think it's Bert Young's character. Uh, just it's got to be seen and be believed. Speaking of things that have to be seen and believed, it's Anvil 3D, and you know what's really cool about this? It's in 3D. It actually is. So if you've got a 3D TV, you can watch Anvil the way that was meant to be seen, the way that it should be seen. This one here is in 3D. Is this a great film? No. Is it a fun film? Yes. It's fun. It's cheesy. It's... And look at this. Look at this cover. Can you not want to see this in 3D right now? You probably can, but you shouldn't. You really should. You can see Lori Loughlin in 3D, and she's really cute. And she was in like that show that I don't like. Uh, what was it called? Full House. <clears throat> yeah. 
Sorry guys, that show was totally lost on me. $42 can, can net you three Scream Factories in this fantastic little box set right here. The Anvil Trilogy was one that I was very excited to get when I got it and uh, still am to this day. Part 2 is the biggest watch for me and uh, I just really love it. I just think it's a really cool film. Next up for $17.99 you can grab yourself a John Carpenter Classic. One that should be in your collection already but if it's not, <clears throat> here's the time to get it. Saw it on Precinct 13. Just a very cool film. Got some great stuff. Interviews with Nancy Loomis. Um, did with the art director on here, Tom Lee Wallace. Audio commentary with John Carpenter. Interview with Carpenter and, and actor Austin Stoker. This is a cool film. This is a brutal film, mind you. <clears throat> These bad guys are bad. They're not. They're not like middling. They're not kind of. There's not. There's no gray area. These guys will kill you, and they kill people. Like, yeah, you just got to check it out. And it's a great, great alternate cover here as well. Amazing stuff by John Carpenter, one of his early, like, fantastic little films. And if you like John Carpenter, you're going to love this one. This is going to be one that should be in your collection. If you haven't got it yet, now's the time to pick it up. It's at an awesome price. And remember, two of these and shipping's free. So it's, it's a lot, <clears throat> actually, with this stuff here. Next up is seventeen ninety nine as well, and that is The Burning. Uh, again, if you have you like slashing movies at all, if you want to have... There's certain slasher movies that you should have in your collection. That I don't care if you're like a huge fan of slashers, or if you're like you're like just a horror fan in general, and you're wondering like, what should I get? Like, if I want to have some representations of different genres, what should I get to have representation of each genre? Well, The Burning is one of those really good representations of the slasher genre done right. It's it was done in the year that a Madman was done, and it was done in the same year that Friday Thirteenth Part Two was done. And although I do like both of those films. This film is far superior to those. Uh, probably the fact the direction is good. We do have Tom Savini doing special effects on here. So we do have some really good, really intense special effects work. But we also got a great cast as well. Uh, we, we got Brian Matthews. We have uh, Lee Ayres. We got Brian Backer. But we got a lot Larry Joshua. But you know who else we got? We got Jason Alexander. We got Fisher Stevens. We got Holly Hunter. It's quite the cast. Right here. Hey. An amazing, amazing thing. So I'm back. My better half just got a call from mom, so uh, she had to like stop the video for a second when she went upstairs to make that call. Next one is $11.99. Uh, it's a personal favorite of mine, and it is uh, Klaus Kinski in Crawl Space. I love this film. It's a strange film. It's not for everybody, but it is really fun. It's a psychological uh, thriller. Done really well. It's got some great actors in it. Talia Balsam is in this. It's directed by David Shomer. with a tourist trap, and of course, Pup Master. Uh, it's got a great audio commentary on here as well. Interview with the uh, makeup art effects artist. But the most important thing, best feature, and I talk about this every time that I show this one here, and it's the short film, Please Kill Mr. Kinski. Klaus Kinski is known for being a very hard person to work with, a very unusual actor. You get to find out exactly how much he tested the uh, patience of the people that work with him in this uh, short Supposedly nonfiction. <clears throat> Please kill Mr. Kinski. Next up, we'll run you. Let's see. Since she's making do the prices, we'll also go for seventy ninety nine, and it is Dark Man. Uh, this is pretty much the one that Sam Raimi, with the Sony, had to look at and say, "Yeah, this guy can do Spider Man. This guy can definitely do Spider Man. He's got the visuals." Uh, Liam Neeson in his early days, of course, we got a. Uh, Francis McDormand, right? Yeah, Francis McDormand here. We got, a, of course, uh, Larry Drake as the, the big villain. And it's just a great film. Uh, Dark Man is just a fantastic one. And if you're wondering about the original cover art, there it is right there. Just some very, very cool stuff. A lot of visuals. And if you want to see that many features it has, just look at that. Interview with McDormand. I do a commentary. It will be fun. Interview with Larry Drake. Durant's Dr men interviews with the with the other actors. Durant's designs. The face of Vent, Revenge. They all they have all kinds of stuff here, vintage cast crew profiles, but you know what they forgot to put on the back here? There's an interview with Liam Neeson, the Dark Man himself, on here as well. And it's not even mentioned on the back of the cover, but it's on here. And it's really cool. Next up is another classic John Carpenter film, and this one is gonna run you seventeen ninety nine. Just so I if I never said it before, Supernova is gonna run you fourteen ninety nine. And Eva Destruction, the other one that I pick that I'm picking up, is gonna run you twelve ninety nine. And for $17.99, you can get the amazing 
Fog. And the Fog, and it's a great, great version. This is the original, not the crappy remake. Just has some amazing, great stuff on here. Uh, John Carpenter's classic roles, roles and scarier than ever. And it really is a classic. <clears throat> a lot of people, even John Carpenter himself, underrates this film. And, and I find this really well done. Look at the features on this as well. I'm going to pause and look at them all you can. There's interviews, audio commentaries, Hot Horse, Hollowed Grounds, which is a very famous feature. At, I like a lot of people really get into that. That's on here as well. Just a lot of great stuff. It's a, it's a great film. It's a great look. If you like ghost stories, I think it's a fun little ghost story. And it's just, uh, it's different. And it does things. From Beyond is one of my favorite H.P. Lovecrafts. So uh, <clears throat> this one for me was a no-brainer. This is probably one of the lesser cover-wise, but... That's okay because we still have the ultimate like uh, cover right here, and it's very very fun. I am a big fan of uh, From Beyond, and of course uh, we have a uh, Barbara Crampton looking extra gorgeous in her uh, leather dominatrix outfit. Uh, when I got to speak with uh, Jeffrey Coombs, he told me that when he made when he did this movie, he didn't think that he was casted right for the film, <clears throat> and I think it's actually mentioned on here as well. He thought that some that the uh, not the other actor, some uh, another actor that acted with him in uh, Handmaid would have been a better choice for the role. Uh, so he's kind of reluctant to do it. But he does love. Uh, he did love doing like a uh, reanimator. He did have fun on the film. Ken Frey is in this movie as well, from uh, Down to Dead. So just a really cool little film. Definitely worth checking out. And uh, <clears throat> next up is the one that has the most commentaries of all of them. I think. That's for seventy ninety nine. You can get Night of the Comets. Again, great little one here. This is the original cover, which I don't like as much as this one right here. Actually, I do love this cover. This one I think has like three audio commentaries on it. It's just really, they went, really went all out with like the interviews and stuff like that. But three audio commentaries in this one. Three. It's a fun film. It's a cheesy film. It's a film set in its time. It is an eighties film, and it if you can get up past that if that does if that bothers you then probably it's not the film for you but I thought this was a really fun film I really enjoyed it and it's one that I uh, would recommend here's one that depends on how much you like canon films <clears throat> and uh, ninja films and uh, ninja 3 the domination which will set you back 12.99 is just a fun little film as you can see that's the sin that Dickie was also in the uh, breaking films uh, she was kind of the canon it girl, the go-to girl for uh, canon films. I had a lot of fun with this movie. It's uh, very cheesy. Of course, we got a uh, show of Kasuji in this one as well. Because, you know, that was this thing, the ninja. These ninja films were pretty much his showcase. We want to put a female in, in the lead here because it gave it more sex appeal. So to keep it, like, up to date, she's an aerobic instructor because that was big in the day. And uh, because a female can't just be a ninja, she had to be possessed by a ninja. And only a ninja can kill a ninja. Ninja 3 The Domination. If you're a fan of cheesy, fun little action flicks, this is a great one. If not, there may be a pass up for you, but for me, I had to have it. Next up, we'll run you 17, and that is Prison. I uh, really did enjoy this film here. Uh, Horror as a new home. There's two different covers for it. <clears throat> I did not like the uh, alternate cover, but I do love the uh, this art here on the inside. It's pretty cool, actually. Uh, Prison was done by, I think, was it Rennie Harland? Yeah, Rennie Harland. Uh, you know, produced again by, uh, by Charles Band. Uh, we got Viggo Mortensen in the role. Lane Smith, the late Lane Smith, is in here as well. Uh, Chelsea Field. I'm pretty sure that uh, some of the uh, effects that are on this one are from. Uh, oh, is it Bushler? I think it might be Dan Kurt Bushler. I know that Kane Hodder is the uh, stunt coordinator in this film. And that's how he. I'm pretty sure that. That's how we met Bushler, was in this film here. And the actually, that's how we got to be Jason later on. So, uh, pretty cool that way. C. Courtney Joyner, who did a lot of these films, uh, was the writer in this one here. I just watched a movie recently that he, that he did. I'm trying to remember what it is. I think it was uh, From Whisper to a Scream. Actually, he wrote that one. That was one of his first films. Prison is a much uh, more tightly put together movie. Now, the next two are on Blu ray, but I have the DVD editions. <clears throat> but I want to show them as well. And they're going to. Each one of these are seventeen ninety nine each, and uh, for the Blu-ray editions, I guess I've got the DVD editions. So uh, it's Psycho two and Psycho three. You can't talk about one without talking about the other. One is kind of like with Richard Franklin, 
It's meant to be more of a suspense type, kind of like uh, kind of like Hitchcock. It is a really good follow up, as far as like follow ups go, and I like staying true to the um, to the original. Uh, this one really does so, and it really actually progresses the character. There's actually character development here, which is really neat to see in the sequel because you don't usually see that. It just usually basically recycles out stuff that it had before and just slaps in a bunch of new characters. Soko 2 actually takes the uh, the ballsy risk of taking the killer, Norman Bates, and advancing and developing his character more, and I just really, really enjoy that. So it's got a great commentary, by the way. Commentary with Tom Holland, it's really well. But Psycho 3 is a slightly more sleazier one. It's more of a slasher film. Uh, this one is the uh, screenwriter Charles Edward Pogue, and again, another amazing commentary. This is also an interview with Kate Shea on here and Brink Stevens, who did like a... Uh, I think she was a body double for one of the actresses in the on this film here. So, just really cool stuff. <clears throat> Next up is Swamp Thing. <clears throat> now, I'm a really big fan of this, so I wanted to get some Blu-ray. There are some decent features on here as well. But this is not the totally uncut. This is not the European cut. <coughs> that's, oh, man. That's pretty much legal to get now. But uh, you can find it somewhere in the MGM. They really sit short. But this is a really good dev Swamp Thing on Blu-ray. For me, it was like it was a no-brainer. I'm saying not all of these for everybody. But I'm just putting in the ones that I got, and uh, you can decide on your own. And Swamp Thing will set you back with twelve ninety nine. So that's pretty good. The other one on here is the Scream Factory presents TV Terrors, which is two, our two TV horror films. That runs about eight ninety nine. I haven't had that one yet, so I can't talk on the quality of it. But it's one that I do intend to pick up. I've been wanting to get some for a while. I do like TV horror films, especially from back in the day. Next up is one I think belongs in everybody's collection. I think pretty much everybody's going to grab this one that doesn't have it. And it's twelve ninety nine. It is Terror Vision, The Video Dead. These are just two really fun films. Terror Vision is an incredible film. I mean, uh, out and out on its own, Terror Vision would have been perfect. And I actually got this for The Video Dead because I remember seeing this in the uh, in VHS in the end of the day and it really blew me away. It was just such really cool cover. cover, And uh, it's very cheesy, very fun. I, I liked it. I enjoyed it. But Terror Vision is the more, as far as quality films go, it's more quality films, some really great stuff. It's got a great little soundtrack Terror Vision does on it. And uh, the song Terror Vision is actually really cool, really kind of cute. As you can tell, even though it's a double feature, but a lot of them don't have features on them, this one here does have a bunch of features on it. And it's really worth picking up. <clears throat> if you're grabbing one from the old section this time, and this one is not in your collection right now, grab it. You'll thank me for it. It really is that good of a double feature. And really is that fun of films. If you're either going to love Video Dead or you may not like it, but you're probably going to love Terror Vision. It's a really fun film, funny film, a lot of dark humor. Next up is one I, that, uh, although they got on there, and I'm sure it's going to be people that pick it up, I'm guessing a lot of people that want this movie probably already got it. But if you haven't, there's no excuse not to get it now. And this one is going to run you about, I think, probably about 17, right? 17. That is Day Live, John Carpenter's Day Live. It's just an amazing film. It's one of the, that a lot of people started with a Scream Factory with. They saw this movie, and this was a movie that got Scream Factory a lot of attention. <clears throat> and people were like, you know, we want They Live. We definitely want to pick that up. So uh, that's one that got picked up a lot. So uh, let's see. If you don't have it, get it in your collection. It's a great John Carpenter film. Uh, if you do have it, uh, like me, kudos. You did the right thing picking it up. But uh, here we go with the second to last one. This one runs $17.99. <clears throat> it's Charles B. Pierce's The Town of Dread Sundown. As you know, they recently did a uh, kind of a, a revisioning of this one here, kind of almost like a remake to the actual killings, more than a remake, re, kind of a sequel to the actual killings, rather than a sequel to this film here. This film is actually referenced in the movie, the new movie, The Town of Dread Sundown. It's a very cool little film. It's got some kind of odd choices for like humor in, in certain parts of it, but the killer cannot be denied. He is a scary killer, and uh, there's just some really great scenes. There's a scene in the field there with, uh, okay, what's her name? She plays Don on, uh, yeah, Don, actually Don Wells. She plays Mary Jane, Mary Jane on uh, Killing Zon. Mary Jane? Mary Ann. Mary Ann. Mary Ann, that's what it is. Yeah. I've been talking for a while, I guess. But if that wasn't enough, and the, the bonus feature, we got audio commentary with historian Jim Presley, interview with actors Andrew Prine and Don Wells, the extra trailer, an essay by writer Brian Albright. But we also get this, guys, and this is really cool. The Victors with Jessica Harper and uh, Vic Morrow. It is a really cool little film. And this one here just... You definitely got to see it. It is... It, something about it in the day just chilled me. It really did, and I really do like this film. So $79.99 for two films. This actually is a double feature, guys. 
Um, grab it. <clears throat> There's one that I liked, and a lot of people were wanting and asking for. Some people were like, were amazed and, and ah, when it finally came out and said, "Oh, this is awesome." Some people said, "This is it." Um, I'm one of those. This is awesome type camps, but uh, it goes like a. You, uh, this one tends to like divide people you either like it or you don't and it's uh without warning or uh, got the alternate case cover on here so it came without warning i just love the cover and uh got audio commentary with director graden clark interviews with cinematographer dean cundy co-writer co-producer daniel grodnick special makeup artist uh, creator greg canham and actor chris nelson a theatrical trailer just some really very cool stuff doesn't that alien car remind you of the uh Alien from that sort of uh, Star Trek where it turned out to be an, uh, just a puppet. That was no, but it's like kind of a little bottle of an alien. Yeah, kind of gives me that type of feel to it as well. So, here are some great actors in here. We've got Cameron Mitchell in here, Martin Landau, Jack Palance, just Neville Brand is in this one, Ralph Meeker's in this. Just an incredible cast of uh, older veteran actors. What's some younger, lesser known actors thrown in there? But there we go, guys. That is the. Uh, sh the Scream Factory sale. I'm very excited. I've got two coming. I can't wait to see what next week is going to bring. And if next week has a lot of stuff that I don't have, uh, I will be going over the six again that are there. I'll give you my thoughts on them. So if I had to pick <clears throat> ones from here that I think everybody you know, should have. Out of the top six that are there right now, the ones, the top three that I can pick out of the top six, if you're picking three, would be... Uh, Dolls, Tales from Crypt Valdepoir, and Sleepaway Camp. Those are the three from the six. If you're going to grab six, because remember, those six are only on for this week, and then you go back to normal price. The other ones, they'll be on for the rest of the month, but uh, the the six-pack are only on for a week, and then they're off again. So uh, these are my top three picks for the uh, top for the six-pack this week. As for top picks for the other ones, pretty much all depends on your taste. There's a lot of really cool stuff there. A lot of really different stuff. Let me know which ones you're going to get. What uh, movies you think are worth really picking up. And uh, for me right now, my voice is going. So you know what time it is. It is time for tea. Say hello to the great pin lord in the sky. His buddy, the phantom. Their good friend, the creature from the Black Lagoon. And for me right now, with all the Scream Factory goodness and the Criterion sale coming up tomorrow, which I'm probably not going to get into because Scream Factory. Guys. I am out of here. Have a great night.